So this is why you don't want to send your books to CBCS for grading. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So what we are talking about here are values, the values of the comics. There could be other reasons that you want to send to CBCS. You like their grading more. You don't like CGCs, like recent practices. You like their cases more, whatever, you know, whatever it might be. But what we're going to be talking about here is the recent Heritage Signature Comic Auction. And so we are going to look at the CBCS books that sold in that auction. I priced them all out like I would price out CGC books. That is not what I normally do when I'm pricing CBCS. Normally, when I'm pricing CBCS, I price out like CGC and I subtract some amount based on what I think the CBCS copy would actually go for. But I didn't do that here. Here, I priced them out like CGC. And then we're going to see how they performed based on what I think they should have sold for. And I feel like I have established myself over the years as somebody who is pretty good at estimating prices of comics, what they will go for. Now, obviously, I can't get everything perfect, all that. There can be some little variations, but I am pretty accurate on my pricing. So we're going to go over each one of these books that sold in this auction, how it performed versus how I thought it should. And not everything went low. We'll see. We'll, we'll talk about all that once we've, we've gotten through these books. So here we've got that recent Heritage Signature Auction. And what I did was I just did a search on CBCS. So I could just get the CBCS books that sold in this auction. Now, the first thing I just want to point out, and this is how you can really see the gap between CGC and CBCS in terms of graded books, the volume that's out there, and how much it really is like a single horse race. I mean, yeah, CBCS is number two, but it is not even close. In this entire auction, there were 15 CBCS books that sold. There were 663 CGC books. That is 2.2% of the books that were sold in this auction were CBCS. I mean, it's, it's not even close. It isn't even close. I've heard as much as maybe 5% of graded books are CBCS, and this could be uh, this might not be an exact representation of that percentage, but it gives you an idea, really, what the gap is between the volume of CGC and CBCS graded books. Well, let's start with the first book here. First book we're going to talk about is House of Secrets 92 in a 9.8. And I did actually talk about this one in a different video. I said, I thought as a CBCS book, and I'm not going to do this for all of them, but as a CBCS book, I thought it would sell for like 55000 Went for 58.8. So, hey, you know, great. Great for, for that book that it beat my estimate by a little bit. However, if I priced it as a CGC book, what I thought this book would sell for if this was a CGC 9.8, value it at $80,000. The high sale ever for a 9.8 was 90000 And so we can jump over to GPA. Uh, we can look at the, the sales history for this book because we actually have had a couple 9.8 sell within the last couple of years. We had one sell just in January for 84. It does seem like it's been trending down a little bit more based on other sales, uh, but we had the high of 90,000. So I value this book at 80,000 in a CGC, sold for 58,800. That is 27% below my estimate. So we'll start right there. You know, I mean, this is a big expensive book. If you legitimately think that this could get a 9.8 as a CGC, there is no reason to send this book here. Now, if you don't think it could get a 9.8 as a CGC, and you think maybe the best it could do is a 9.6, then maybe you did better. <laughs> you know, because if you look at a if you look at what a, a 9.6 sells for, last sale 33,600, probably actually a little lower now, maybe like 29 to 30. And so, you know, someone could be playing that game where maybe it was a, a 9.6, they submitted to CBCS, got a 9.8. Because even though everybody says CBCS always grades harder, that's not always the case. You know, there can be some variation there too. So, but if we're looking at 9.8 CGC. This book sold for 27% less than what I thought a CGC 9.8 would sell for. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Next one is Action Comics number 41 in a 9.2. This is an exceptional grade. This is a, a very high grade copy. And, you know, this is what I just want to point out too, because some people give like CGC a really hard time for allowing things like Dust Shadows in these high grades. I mean, Dust Shadow, right? 
like big dust shadow on the right edge too. So, you know, it's it's a pretty consistent thing. Like the both grading companies tend to grade very, very similarly. That is my point. Now this one actually outperformed. It is one of the ones that outperformed what I thought it would sell for. So 9.2, Action Comics 41. I had this book, if it was a CGC, going for 15,000. It has never sold in grade before. But based on what I had seen with some other sales, just the way that I was trying to estimate this book, I think this would have been the second highest graded. Now, if we take a look at the census. Yeah, if it was actually a CGC, it would be a, a 9.2 would be the second highest graded copy. There's a 9.6 Edgar Church. And so this is not an easy book to price, but I looked at what a 9.0 had sold for in 2017 versus what some of these other books had sold for, got what I thought a 9.0 would sell for, and then almost doubled it. Not quite doubled, but more or less doubled it. And so I had it going at around 15,000. And you can see here, went for 19,800. Actually beat my estimate by 32%. So in this case, CBCS book did really well. You know, this is one that performed really, really well compared to what I thought it would do. All right, now let's move on to the next book here. All American Comics number 18, very early Green Lantern appearance. And so let's take a closer look at this book. Uh, this is a 7.5, again, has the new label. You know, a, a good number of these have this new label here. People have either been resubmitting them to get the new labels or, or something. Uh, but this one sold for 5,640. This did not perform well at all. The record for this book was 10,755. And these are some pretty recent sales. I had it going for 10,400, went for 5,640, 46% below my estimate. This wasn't even the worst performer, but this one was, was pretty bad. But if we take a look at this one and we take a look at a 7.5, just kind of get an idea where this one you know, why I come up with some of those estimates and look right here, you know, a 7.5 last sale, 10,200, 2022, 10,750 or 775. And we've had a couple sales recently at this price point, even a 7.0 went for 7,000 a couple years ago. So I had it at 10,400, went for 5,640. I mean, yeah, big underperformer. That's, that's all I can say about this book. All right. Now for the next one, high grade copy, Batman number five in an 80. This book I had going for and not my not my favorite cover for, for early Batman, but still very early Batman. Record for this book was 11,700. That was actually a very high sale. It feels like that one was an outlier when I've talked about confirming sales and all that kind of thing. Other sales that have happened have not confirmed that record sale. Uh, so I valued this one at 7,500, went for 6,600. So 12% below my estimate, you know, $900 below my estimate, not too far off, but still 12% uh, below my estimate for this book. And, you know, it's one of those, like, you know, we can take a look at it and see, you know, what you think of the, of the grade. Like there's some foxing or something going on up here, a little bit of, you know, some little tears at the edges, uh, tears at the staples. It's got some, you know, staple rust with a little bit of, uh, staple kind of like bleed, like the rust migration on the page. And you can just see the wear along the spine, you know, more staple tears, that kind of thing. I mean, it's a pretty nice looking book. I think this is just scratch on the case. It's a pretty nice looking book. Um, do I think it would get NATO from CGC? Maybe, probably. I mean, it, it is on average a pretty good book. It's got this, like, you've got these little like chips, like minor tears along the top edge. I wouldn't be shocked if it got like a seven, five or a seven though. So definitely something, you know, that maybe people considered with that, with that bidding. Um, but yeah, fell below my estimate. I had it at 7,500, went for 6,600. All right. Next one here. This is a pretty cool cover. This is Blue Beetle number 10. Uh, you've got the good girl art stuff, the bondage cover, woman in the red dress, all that kind of thing with this one. I had this book going for 8,500, went for 5,760 not even close, 32% <laughs> below my estimate for this book. So let's take a look at Blue Beetle number 10. I mean, some of these are exceptionally rare grades. I mean, an 8.5, not like they come up for sale all that often, a uh, book from 1941. And, but if we, if we look at, at the, the grading for this, this book in theory would be the best book 
it would be top of census if this legitimately could get a 8.5 from CGC. And so that's, I mean, that's how I priced this out. I looked at what an 80 went for in 2017 was 2,230. I looked at how that price had changed with some other books. And then I added a premium for that top of census that, I mean, cause top of census books generally sell for a pretty big jump, like especially if they are single highest graded. And so for me, I had valued this book at 8,500, went for 5,760. Maybe somebody's going to take that gamble. You know, maybe they think it has that shot at the 8.5. I don't know. You know, you can go and take a look, you know, take a close look at it. Let me know what you think. Um, but to me, this book for the grade, you know, for the grade on this case, making this the highest graded copy was a pretty big underperformer, 32% below my estimate. All right. Now, the next one, awesome book here. So we've got Chamber of Chills number 19. So this is a 5.0 and it is a beautiful 5.0. I actually checked the graders notes on it because I was wondering if maybe somebody was thinking that they could bump it or something like that. Now, the prior record in the 5.0 was 7,977. This book has gone up a lot since that sale. I had valued this at 17,000. There had been a 4.5 recently for around 16, a 5.5 five for around 18. And so I had this one at 17,000, went for 18,000. Beat my estimate by 6%. I mean, this was a solid sale. I mean, this went for basically what I would expect it to if it was a CGC. And you can see it is a, it is a really stunning copy of this book. Now, the main reason that it got the grade that it did is on the back, you can see it's got staining that and it actually goes through the whole book in the notes. They say it goes through the whole book staining up there. It's kind of along the top edge and then over here as well. And so you've got all the staining that's on the book. That's really what's holding this book back. But it is a very, very clean presenting copy at a 5.0. I wouldn't even be shocked if it was able to get like a 5.5 if it was resubmitted. And uh, But yeah, this was a strong, solid sale for this book. All right, now the next one here. This one is extremely difficult to price. So, I mean, take it for what it is on this book because this is a Submariner number one. It is also a restored copy. It has moderate professional restoration. You can see professional restoration includes small amount of color touch on cover, pieces added to cover, center fold and last page reinforced, tear seals last page, and the last thing here, cover and staples cleaned. The problem there is that you cannot get back to a universal grade with that. Now that doesn't mean like it's a, a big problem for the book. It just, when we're, you're valuing restored books, a lot of times what you'll look at is, could I get this back to a blue label? And in this case, you couldn't because you had the staples clean, you had the cover clean, you cannot get back to that blue label. I mean, maybe there's some people that can do some underhanded things and get there, but in theory, you you can't. So I had valued this one at 16,000. There had been some lower grade restored copies that had gone for like 12 and 15,000. This one was a little bit higher, so I had it at 16, went for 12,000. So yeah, this one went 25% below my estimate. But it, this is tough. I mean, with a restored book, you know, a, a rare book like this and this type of grade already pretty difficult to value. But I do think that if it was in a CGC, it would have gone for more. I think it would have gone for probably around 16,000. That's why I estimated that. And it went for 12. So this was 25% below my estimate. The next one we're going to talk about, pretty interesting because somebody had messaged me on Instagram about this one, basically that there was a Facebook post as well, where it was the person who had bought it. And it sounded like they had some buyer's remorse and they were uh, saying that there was something in the, the graders notes about like a variant pedigree and they didn't know what that was and that they, they were complaining about the buyer's premium, you know, and I'm like, I, I'm kind of, honestly, I'm kind of tired of hearing people complain about the buyer's premium. Like that's just heritage's fee for for selling the book, whether you disagree with it being 20%, you know, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Like the buyer does not care about the buyer's premium. The seller does, because in most cases now you can, people can make deals with heritage to keep certain percentages of things and all that kind of thing. But in most cases, the seller is not getting that buyer's premium. It's the seller that cares about it. No one, unless they, they are making a big mistake and they don't understand and like what's going on on the site, no one is bidding the full price and then paying the 20% on top of it. They are bidding 20% below the price and then they are paying what the book is. It would go for effectively at that market. I mean, that's why you don't see every sale at Heritage going 20% over. 
<laughs> I mean, that it's you just you don't see that. And it's because people know they know they bid 20 percent less and then the buyer's premium gets tacked on on top of it. It's I, I don't know why this is like such a contentious subject, because it just it doesn't make any sense that that people have a problem with. Like, who cares how much heritage makes off the sale? Like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Like the only person that should care is the seller. And if the seller you know, is OK with it, then what do you care as the buyer? I mean, that's a little rant there. But let's check out let's check out this uh, QR code here. So I brought my my extra you know phone here and I so I can scan this QR code to see what this person was talking about. Um, so I'm just going to scan it real quick. A few moments later. <laughs> like, all right. This is pretty funny. <laughs> OK, I'm going to I'm going to go full screen here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this phone or not. Um, but so this is the, the graders notes for this thing. And you see how it says variant colon pedigree colon. That's just the the placeholder. If the book is a variant or the book is a pedigree, it's not that it's a variant pedigree. It's <laughs> it, it's the it's just, it's like if it was a variant. It's, if it was a variant, it would fill in next to that or a pedigree would fill in next to it. So I, I, whatever. Um, so <laughs> then it says the the notes are minor stress, uh, stress lines does not break color, minor soiling back cover. So let's take a close look. I mean, let's take a close look at this book. I, I mean, honestly, I think they paid about what the book is worth. I mean, I valued it at 8,125. Basically, I took what I thought it was worth in a 9.6 multiple, multiplied it by 1.25, so 25%. Uh, that's what I had seen with some other sales in the prior history with graded copies of this book. And so I valued it at 8,125. He paid 8,400. I mean, went 3% over, but basically went in line. Um, if he thought he was getting it for 7,000, then I, I don't know. I don't have to tell him about that. But Let's take a close look at this book. I mean, top edge looks real good. I and mean, we're going down the side here. Definitely like some, maybe like a small tear at that staple, some stress at that staple. Uh, the rest, I mean, this, it's always tough to see spine stress on this because of the the white, kind of the miswrap on there. Um, this staple looks really good. Uh, bottom corner looks good. I don't see anything really jumping out on this copy. I mean, maybe like a tiny bit of wear in that corner, but this is a great looking book. And if it's soiling on the back cover, that's something that can be cleaned. Maybe this book hasn't been cleaned. I mean, who knows? Now that CGC is going to be doing verified signatures, maybe they can crack it out, resubmit to CGC and might even have a shot at 9.8. Then this would be an amazing purchase. You know, it's like a $20,000 book, maybe even a little more. So who knows? Maybe it was a, a great purchase by that person. And I, I just, I know they had buyer's remorse and they're complaining about the buyer's premium and you know, whatever else. But yeah, no, the, uh, it makes me think either they've never bought a CBCS book before, or they're just like really like worked up right now and are unable to comprehend <laughs> what those notes mean, but there's no such thing as a, a variant pedigree. It is just the, it's the placeholders, but all right, let's move on to the next book. Uh, I always love talking about this one. Ultimate fallout four. So first appearance of miles Morales, the variant edition 9.8. Uh, I can't remember what the one sold for as a CBCS maybe like six months ago. It was somewhere around 10,000 or 11,000, maybe even 12, something like that. I had this, if this was a CGC, I had this going for 12,750. Its record was 43,200. Uh, so obviously well down from that record. And it went for 22% below what I think it would right now as a CGC. I've said it multiple times before. I wouldn't pay this. I wouldn't pay that 12,000. I wouldn't pay any of that. Like I, there's no way I'd be buying this book right now. I would be waiting until it's down at like five grand. And if it doesn't ever get down to five grand, I'm fine with that. I just think there is so much downside risk still with this book. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, this one definitely underperformed. I feel like nine eights often underperform quite a bit when you're going with CGC versus CBCS, because there's so much risk in the crossover. Like if you have a 7.0 CBCS and you cross it over to a CGC and it gets a 6.5, like your downside risk in terms of value is pretty low. But when you go from a 9.8 and you have the potential to drop to a 9.6, the value drop is much higher, <laughs> much more risky. And so I think most people probably when they're buying this, they're they're thinking of crossing it over and the risk there is just really high. Uh, but regardless, went well below 
what I thought it would if it was a CGC book. All right. Now, the next one is also a little tricky. Uh, this is a Batman number 11, uh, but it's yellow label. It's a verified signature. Uh, it's a Jerry Robinson verified signature on the first page. So 3.5, it's a pretty good looking book, but it has a very large stain down in the corner down here. Um, it, it might still, it would probably still get a 3.5 CGC. I've seen some pretty nice looking books that have big stains and end up getting around a 3.5, uh, like big corner stains like that. But uh, this one went for 5,760. I had estimated it at 6,800. The record was 6,300, obviously not signed. Um, so I added a little bit for the signature. And so this one went 15% below my estimate. Uh, this is a book that's been coming up for sale quite a bit recently. I I said it before, like I used to think I would really like this book and I saw one in person and the cover just didn't appeal to me all that much. And I'm big on that, that cover appeal. Like it's like how I feel when I see that cover in person. And, uh, but regardless, I valued it at 6,800 and went for 15% below my estimate. So this again, another one that underperformed. Now this next one, I am definitely just taking a shot in the dark at the value. So take this for what it is. Now this is... <laughs> This is one of these really old labels. I've talked about these. This is like this short period of like, it was like six months at CBCS where they used this label. Uh, they were trying out different things and it's just considered the most hideous label of all time. Just the the, the text that was used, the this like fake rivet thing here. Um, people joke that it's like, it must've happened while Steve Borak was away. <laughs> they were like, we're gonna try this new thing. Um, this is a 9-2 and it had sold previously for as a CGC for 1434. So the only thing I could really think to do with valuing this book was I looked at a copy of, or I looked at what the prices had been for issue number one. And so this is where like people have asked how you price out some of these more rare golden age books, that kind of thing, or even just like high value bronze silver. Uh, you can see this, like this one sale from 2015 for 1434. It sold in 2014, 2012. And so that's, that's really all I have to go on. So I went and looked at issue number one, and then I just picked one that had sold relatively recently, you know, the 7.5. And I looked back at what it had sold for back around 2015. It was like a $300 book. And today it's selling for, you know, 469, like maybe it was 300, 350. And so it's like 30% more maybe 40% more. So I estimated it at 1800 sold for 1500. I mean, it's close enough. Like I feel like I can't really say a lot about this one. Um, went for, again, went for 17% below my estimate, but a uh, pretty obscure book and one that the pricing is very, very difficult on. Uh, so yeah, I mean, underperformer, but I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna hold too much against CBCS for that one. All right. Now this next one, cool book. Detective Comics number 36. This one is also restored. It has moderate professional restoration. And we can see here, moderate amount of color touch on cover, pieces added to cover, cover reinforced, spine split sealed, tear seals to cover, cover and interior cleaned. And again, that cover and interior cleaned, uh, it means it's generally, it means it's like chemically cleaned. And so that means that you can't get back to a universal. I mean, maybe so, again, maybe some people have some ways to do it, but you generally can't get back to universal. Uh, but 5.5, five, moderate professional. And so I had this one going for 14,000, 8,400, 40% below my estimate. This one to me was a pretty big underperformer. Now, again, it can be pretty tricky to, uh, to evaluate what prices a restored book is going to go for. And this one definitely had a lot going against it. I mean, it's a restored book and it's a CBCS book. Um, has the, the, hor you know, what, not the horrible label, like the, I mean, a little bit newer label, I guess with that one. Um, but if you look at what this book would have gone for, if it was unrestored, unrestored, I think probably around 40,000, like a five, five would probably go somewhere around 38 to 40,000. Um, at this grade range at this value, I don't think it's going to sell like half. I know a lot of people use the rule of thumb where a restored book sells for half as much. And I don't, I don't think that this one would, I think it would be lower than that. Uh, so what I was doing is I was looking at like, what do I think like the base value of this book is? And I think it's at bare minimum, it's like a $10,000 book. And if we look at uh, restored 
sales, which again, it's it's tough to say. There was a 25C1 that went for 19,200, but I bet you that one was like just color touch and it could actually get back to a universal, which is why someone paid so much uh, for that restored copy. Uh, we had this 5.5 five that went for 9,600. Now this is a B5. Uh, this other one based on the notes should have been like an A3 or an A4. Um, so a little less restoration. So I figured 10 grand again here is like why I feel like the bare minimum because it has less restoration and it's professional. And so that's why I valued it at 14,000. It sold for 8,400. I, I think that was a steal. I think whoever got that book got it for an absolute steal. That's that's one of the ones on here I think was a very, very good buy. Um, but not as good of a buy as the next one. The next one was possibly the best buy uh, of all these and a, one of the best buys of the auction. It's this Tales from the Crypt number 23. I talked about this one in the live stream because I missed it. I had meant to bid on this one and I missed it because I was doing that live stream. And so this is a Gaines file copy. This is... Tales from the Crypt 23, 9 6, Gaines file copy, went for 4560 I valued this book at $9,500. <laughs> like, because I, and not just that, I think it could potentially go for significantly more because this book is incredible. I think that it has a very good shot at a 9 8. And so, I mean, I, I did this in the live stream, but I mean, this book is just, stunning i mean it maybe has like one spine tick here and it has this little bit of like a bindery like tear like a little paper loss at that corner but this i mean look i mean like look at that corner I mean, super super sharp corner super sharp edges amazing corners up here I, I mean and this corner is like extremely sharp i mean this is just an incredible copy of this book and the whites are really, really white on this cover. A lot of time they get kind of yellowy and really bright whites on this cover. I and mean, this is just an incredible copy. And so I, with what I've seen with Gaines file copies, like Gaines file copies have been getting a lot of attention lately. And so I think as a CGC, I think this would sell for 9,500. And there are, it's something like eight, nine sixes of this book. And the, cause there's so many Gaines file copies, but I think there's only two nine eights. And I think this would have a shot. I, I would I would definitely take a crack at resubmitting this to CGC and see if I get a 9-8 on it. And then who knows? Like that could be a 12, 14, 15 thousand dollar book, maybe even more. And I mean, this was to me, this was just one of the steals of the auction. Just uh, I, I'm so I'm pretty I'm pretty upset with my because I knew when I saw that when I was like nine six CVCS gains file copy. I just, I knew that there was a, a good shot that this book was going to go low and that it was going to be a great buy. Cause I had looked at it ahead of time. I was like, this is a stunner. And so I'm, uh, I should, I should have put in like a pre-bid or something just so I at least had it in there. I mean, somebody may have bid back at me a lot and I wouldn't have gotten it anyway, but I just, this one went way too cheap, way, way too cheap. But this was the worst performer of all of them. In my opinion, 52% below my estimate, just oof, brutal. All right. Next one here, Journey into Mystery, number 32. Uh, this is an 8.0. It's, I think, the highest that's ever sold is a 7.5, but there are higher grade copies of this book. Uh, it's like the, if it was a CGC, I think it's like the fourth highest graded copy. Uh, so this one I had valued at, yeah, and you can see here, it's like there's never been an 8.0 that sold, uh, but if you do go to the census, you can see it's like the fourth highest graded if it was a CGC. But Based on what I had seen with other prices and how they'd moved, I valued this one at 1800 And this book sold for $1,440. So it went 20% below my estimate. You know, again, like, who knows? Like, people might have looked at it and thought they didn't think it. I mean, to me, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't feel like an 8.0 spine to me. I mean, you let me know. I mean, I know because a lot of people that are always given, like, CGC a hard time. Like, and say that CBCS is, like such a strict grader like what do you think like with all these creases and like pretty substantial table uh, staple tears and you can tell there's a lot of damage on the spine i mean like down here too I mean, look at that like bottom edge isn't great more tears here creases like look at this over here like you think this is an 8-0 you know like i mean got a pretty big finger crease here from like a reader's crease there color loss there more damage up here. I mean, it's my, maybe it's like a seven, maybe a seven, five, probably a seven. 
<laughs> Do you think that's a NATO? I mean, everybody that's out there always saying CGC is grades easier than CBCS. Let me know. Let me know what you think, because this does not look like a NATO to me. Um, but sold for 1440. I thought it would sell for 1800 if it was a CGC NATO. I'm not I'm not taking that into account, you know, like what the issue is inside the case, but 20% below my estimate. All right, last book here. 94, Yellow Submarine Unnumbered. You know, like a, a Beatles cover here. This one really underperformed too. This was the it tied for the second worst performer uh, in this auction for CBCS. Went for $780. I had it going for $1450. The record was 1,590. This went 46% below my estimate. I mean, just big underperformer. And just again, so you can see that I'm not like just trying to make up numbers to make CBCS look bad. Uh, we look for Yellow Submarine, uh, NN, and this was a 9.4. It's from Gold Key. And so we look at this book and you go, all right, 9.4. Last sale just in March, 1590. Last year had a couple sales, 1,200 and 900, 2022, 1558, 1560 in 2021. I mean, to me, I mean, especially given this 1590 sale that just happened in March. Let's see, where did that happen? It was on Hakes. I mean, let's make sure it's the same book. Yeah, same book. You know, went for 1590 and five cents. And then, you know, that was March 20th. Then like two weeks later here. 780 bucks. So, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the risk there. Like if you legitimately think that that's a nine, four, that you could send to CGC, why would you send it to CBCS? If your plan is to sell it, you know, why would you send it to CBCS and make half as much when you sell the book? It just uh, doesn't make any, doesn't make any sense. Uh, but all right. So those are, those are all the books. Now let's just, let's take a look at the the numbers real quick on this. Like I said, there were uh, there, when we look at CGC, there were 663 books that sold C from CGC in this auction. Uh, there were just 15 with CBCS. So like I said earlier in the video, just 2%, 2.2% of the books that sold in this auction were CBCS. And so that just, it kind of gives that idea of the advantage CGC has, at least in terms of quantity of books that are out there. And it just means that more people generally are going to have them in their collections and they're going to be more likely to want to have those because a lot of people like to have their books match. You know, that's part of this, part of the reason there. Now, when we look at the average percent per performance across all 15 books, uh, when I averaged it out, they sold on average for 21% below my CGC estimates. And that's pr pretty well in line with what a lot of people generally say with CBCS. They sell for anywhere around, it's usually, I think people often quote like 15 to 20% for CBCS books that they sell below the CGC price. And when we average them out across these 15 books, it's not a perfect system, obviously. I mean, some went way worse. I mean, the worst performer was 52%. We had a couple 46s. There were a couple that went higher and there were a couple that went higher, but they were few and far between. And so on average went for 21% below what I thought they would as a CGC. So, I mean, Take it for what it's worth, but at least with respect to values, this is why I do not send to CBCS and why I will never send to CBCS unless something like this changes. If the CBCS books sell for as much as CGC, hey, sure, no problem sending there. But as someone who is a dealer who is selling a lot of books that is regularly selling, there's no reason that I would send to CBCS to make less money to pay similar amounts of money to make significantly less money. It just, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, that's the video. I thought that this was just a pretty interesting one to talk about because in this entire auction, there were only 15 books. I mean, only 15 books that I had to talk about. I mean, that just it shows you like how few CBCS books compared to CGC are really out there. But let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts? I'm guessing this might be a little charged or heated comment section, but hey, you know, that's why we're talking about this. I, I think that this is an important subject with respect to values and grading. But if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. I got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, subscription button is right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.